Welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is REST API Top 40 Interview Questions and Answer Series. This is the third part of the series. If you haven't checked out the first two parts, make sure that you check them out so that you have continuity and you learn entirely all the questions. I've covered around 20-22 questions there. So let's get started with part three of the series today. Before we start with the questions, I'll request you to get this entire series, question answer series, this entire presentation as an ebook PDF copy at arctutorials.gumroad.com. If you have any questions, write to me at surya.arad at gmail.com. Thank you so much in advance. All right, so let's start with the first question in this series. What is idempotent methods? Idempotent methods are methods that return the same outcome irrespective of how many times the same request has been made. These methods are important as they are common instances where client side might send out duplicate request. Let's say you are trying to make a request to user slash profile. When you pass that particular user one slash profile, that means you are trying to request profile of user one and it will always return you the same copy or the same outcome, right? Those methods are always called as idempotent methods. We use them so that we don't uh, respond to duplicate requests or avoid a need uh, ca uh, to implement caching or to even um, enhance the performance. These methods, remember that whenever the same input comes, the output is always same. And that's why they're called idempotent methods. Now, whenever we talked about a lot of HTTP requests uh, from the client side, but what is what are some of the main parts of an HTTP request? An HTTP request will always have a status line, right? It includes uh, what is the in expected or method, right? What is the status of it with a number 200? It ranges from 200 to 300, 400 and 500. We'll cover that in later in the series. A request method, which indicates what type of HTTP request method you're trying to perform. Get, post, put, delete, patch. It will have a URI, which means how do you uniquely identify a resource on the server? That's an important part of the request. The request will obviously have HTTP request headers and optionally it may have the request body. Okay. When you talk about get calls, you don't really have any data that you send. That's optional. You can send, but that's optional. But in post and put, obviously you will require some data that you want to modify or create. So HTTP request body. These are some of the important parts of an HTTP request. Now, what are the main parts of a HTTP response then, right? Responses are sent from these API to the client and those have a lot of critical information like HTTP version, what version of HTTP it is using. It will have a status number, right? Indicates the status. Like again, 200 okay means 200 means it's okay. 500 means server unavailable, like that. Then you'll have a response headers and you will have response body, which is nothing but the actual payload that we get from the API. So these are the main important parts of an HTTP response. State some HTTP response status codes that you might see working with an REST API. So I talked about statuses, right? Now, 1xx, anything which has 100, 101, 104, that means the request was received, continuing process, okay? It is processing. Anything in 200 series, 200 okay means the success was successfully received, understood and gave you a output. 300, anything in 300, 304 mostly that you would see is a redirection. That means there are a lot of redirections that are taking place. 400 is mostly the client side errors. That means it, whether it's a bad syntax or a bad request cannot be fulfilled, etc. Anything that you see in the 500 series, like 500, 504, all those, that means server has failed at some place and it is not giving you a valid response. So these are the five different statuses that you will see while working with REST API. Absolutely important for everybody, developer, QA, full stack, DevOps, everybody should be aware of these response status codes. So go through these well. 1x means request was received, continuing process. 2xx that is 200 series will be successful. 300 series means redirection. 400 series means client error. 
500 series means server error okay remember that now one of the most basic questions that is often asked is authentication what is authentication process authentication is a process of validating the credentials like username password etc to the system and making sure that the user has been identified in the system correctly in api terms authentication is used to protect the content over web that means only valid users with valid credentials can access the api there are different types of authentication mechanisms like oauth social login you have the basic authentication where you pass username password the passwords are obviously base64 encoding created so you can't really uh, see the string but you can send it in an encrypted format you also have two factor authentication wherein you send username password and then the api will send an otp right to your mobile or an email and then you validate that so there are different ways of authentication these are some of the things that i have listed how does http basic authentication work while implementing basic authentication as part of apis the user must provide a username and password which is then concatenated by the browser in the form of username password and perform base64 encoding on it the encoded value is sent as the value for authorization header on every http request from the browser again this authorization header can differ in the new implementations with the new frameworks sometimes it's called a token which is a combination of username and password sometimes we send username and password both right again it depends from uh, system to system but these are some of the common practices the credentials are encoded which means uh, you don't store it the browser doesn't store it uh, they are not um, really uh, like it's sent over https right so they, they are not secure so secure and then there can be inter, inter uh, interceptors which can transform that request and different way but this is a very generic overview of how uh, authentication systems work but you should be able to explain that in detail now one of the important things when we talk about apis is caching right so what is caching mechanism it's a method of temporarily storing a copy of server response in a location okay so that means uh, in order to quickly retrieve it let's say you are making some api calls frequently same api calls with same data set and you are getting the same outcome so it makes sense that you cache them because next time you can serve from the cache not again going to the server so this decreases the server load caching also makes the applications run faster right since you are not again going to server processing the database logical everything you are just getting from the cache so it's much faster cache duration of a resource now this differs okay now caching differs from system to systems from a company to company some will store it for 30 days some can store longer and etc that depends okay how long the cache you want to be or you can even purge it at request right you can clean the cache whenever you want so caching is a very important mechanism it helps us store a uh, server response in a place for a certain duration of time and we can serve our data from those cached data now you'll often hear the word payload okay when you're working with apis you'll hear the word payload payload refers to the data in the body of a http request or response messages whatever data that you send in http body right body request or response that becomes a payload payload in can be in a json format or in xml format payloads are usually included as part of your http request or response right when you use the methods like get post put patch and delete any data that you send is called a payload any data that you receive back from a response is also called a payload in simple terms all right we talked a little bit about soap in the previous uh, part so let's talk in detail about the difference between rest and soap rest or and soap soap stands for simple object access protocol and these are two different approaches okay there is no right or wrong there are two different approaches two ways to building apis soap is much more stricter in protocol okay than a, than the rest apis uh, rest is not a protocol it's an architecture style right it's a guidelines any api that follows those guidelines becomes a rest api soap is whereas more strict there is a strict format of how you will follow the schema rest apis are much 
simpler to build, more lightweight, and generally faster than SOAP APIs. SOAP APIs are considered more secure than REST, okay, because it has its own infrastructure, it has its own way of processing, etc. REST allows caching of responses, okay, whereas every SOAP request is a brand new transaction and there is no caching mechanism in SOAP. SOAP encodes data in XML format and that's why it is strict, right? Any small mistake in the XML format will screw up the entire XML. <coughs> Whereas REST allows you to encode data in any format through XML or JSON, right? Whereas SOAP is strictly following the XML format and that's why they are strict. That's why it's more, um, if any small errors in the XML format or schema, it would throw errors. Whereas REST will not do that. All right, uh, there's also this question that is often asked to UI developers, especially like what is the difference between a REST and AJAX, right? AJAX stands for asynchronous JavaScript or in, in technical terms, it's called XML HTTP request object, right? So AJAX allows a web page to make a request to the server and update the page, right? So it's basically you make a XML HTTP request object and you get the response. AJAX is done when you call a request, you when you make a request through AJAX, you might be utilizing an API, which is a REST API, right? So REST is most likely an API, whereas AJAX is from the client side, where you make a request, right? So AJAX sends the request to server with XML HTTP object, and the API that is called is a REST. So there are two different things. Think of AJAX like a client side, and REST is your API, which processes that request and gives the response back. All right, that brings us to the end of part four. In the next, I'll cover part five. Here it's written part four, my bad. But in the next, it will be the last episode, uh, which is part four. And this is part three that we have just completed. I hope you're following and enjoying this series. And if you have any questions, write to me in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to help you. I hope you're enjoying this series and learning and preparing for that big interview. Let's join me in the next episode part four where we'll complete this series thank you so much in advance see you in the next episode